Tell me if this sounds familiar. You watched a YouTube video or you read a book and something really struck a chord with you. All of a sudden, you feel all this motivation to start that new side hustle or to start creating content or to build that new habit, quit drinking and change your life. But well, then you ask yourself this wretched question, what will they think? And all of a sudden, it's like you've hit a brick wall of anxiety and fear over how people will perceive this new thing that you want to try. And you feel discouraged. And you don't do the thing. You have an addiction to approval. And if you just had a thought there saying, I, I'm not addicted to approval, I, I don't care what people think about me. Stop. You're coping. I know it's uncomfortable, but I need you to be honest with yourself. Because we all do this. I know for a fact that there's been a moment in your life when you wanted to try something new, you wanted to do something different, but you didn't do it because you were scared of what others would think about it. You were scared of how they were gonna see you after you do this new thing. But don't worry, because I've been there. And in fact, I think the majority of people go through this. It's just most people don't realize how debilitating it is and how it's leading them to a life of regret and untapped potential. So today, I'm gonna show you how to break free. Let's start with a concept that changed my life. Sonder. You are the main character, the protagonist, the star at the center of your own unfolding story. You're surrounded by your supporting cast, the friends and family hanging in your immediate orbit. Scattered a little further out is a network of acquaintances, the people who drift in and out of contact over the years. But there, in the background, faint and out of focus, are the extras the random passerby, each living a life as vivid and complex as your own. They carry on invisibly around you, but each one of them bears the accumulated weight of their own ambitions, their own friends, routines, mistakes, worries, trauma, and triumphs. When your life moves on to the next scene, theirs flickers in place, wrapped in a cloud of backstory and inside jokes and characters strung together with countless other stories that you'll never be able to see. Stories that you'll never know exist. Stories in which you might appear only once, as an extra sipping coffee in the background or as a blur of traffic passing by on the highway. Sonder. The realization that every random passerby is living a reality as vivid and complex as our own. It's a humbling thought, isn't it? See, we're all connected in this vast web of individual stories with our own set of concerns and plot lines and dreams, but we seem to forget that our perception of the world is not the only one. This concept is the crucial first step to overcoming your addiction to approval. And this is the first harsh truth bomb that I need you to get through your head they're not thinking about you. And I know how damn obvious that sounds, but we seem to forget it for some reason. The truth is each one of us is so wrapped up in our own lives, our own concerns, our own insecurities, that, that we don't have the time or energy or even capacity to think about others for too long. And sure, people might notice what you're doing. They might see you meditating in the park and be like, hmm, or they might, Watch your Instagram stories of you promoting your new business. But trust me when I tell you this, they're not spending nearly as much time thinking about you as you fear. We seem to forget that all these NPCs in our lives, from the cute girl who served you coffee to the construction worker working on the side of the road, to them, we're the NPCs. Everyone is the hero in their own story. And in their story, you're just a fucking side character. Now, this isn't to say that you're not important or that people don't care about you. Realizing this should liberate you. It should make you feel free. It's a reminder to stop stifling yourself out of your fear of judgment, to stop needing people's approval. The truth is, is people are too wrapped up in their own problems, their own stories, their own insecurities, that they're not thinking about you. You're the NPC. Let me give you a personal example. 
I have a disability, right? My foot was amputated when I was younger and I now wear a prosthetic brace all day, every day. If you haven't seen the video where I explain my story and how I overcame this, you can watch it after this video, it's right there. But the point is, because of my prosthetic brace, every single time that I'm wearing shorts, I get looks. It doesn't matter where I am or what I'm doing. I could be at the grocery store or at the gym or just walking on the street or on the train. Every single time that I walk past someone, their eyes go down, they look at my leg, and then they look up at me. Every single time. Or sometimes people will just stare for like five seconds straight. And I'm gonna be honest with you, for a while, this really bothered me. I wouldn't wear shorts for a long time because it made me uncomfortable. I didn't like that. It seemed like the first thing that people noticed about me was my brace and therefore my disability. But that wasn't the truth. That was a story I was telling myself. The truth is people were looking because they're curious and they probably didn't think about me for like 10 or 15 seconds after they walked right past me. 10 minutes from then, they probably completely forgot I exist. But instead there I was 10 minutes later, 20 minutes later, 30 minutes later, still thinking about it, still thinking about what they thought about me or if they thought I was weird or different because of my brace. Do you see how pointless and useless this is? Alex Ormosi had an awesome tweet, which I think really puts things into perspective. He said, the Queen of England died five months ago. She ruled an entire nation and accumulated more wealth than 99.99% of humans. And yet, you haven't thought about her except for this tweet. You're gonna die, everyone will move on, do what you want. Which brings us to our next point, the regret of inaction. Something I meditate upon a lot is the end of my life. I picture myself 90 years old in my deathbed, just looking back and thinking about all the things that I did with my life. And what terrifies me is being 90, being in that position and thinking that I didn't get the most out of myself, that I didn't maximize my potential, try all of the things that I wanted to try, help all of the people that I could have helped, explored all of my talents. That's terrifying. James Clear had an awesome quote where he said, most failures are one-time costs. Most regrets are recurring costs. The pain of inaction stings longer than the pain of incorrect action. The truth is, the pain of inaction, the pain of regrets, the pain of missed opportunities, of untapped potential, that hurts a whole lot more than the pain of making a mistake or trying something and failing. The pain of what if haunts you. You're not gonna regret the things you did. You're gonna regret the things you didn't do. So to you watching this, if you have something you wanted to try for a while, if you have an idea that you want to explore, a topic that you want to talk about, teach about, make content about, do it. Take action. Because trust me, it'll hurt a whole lot more if you don't do it. And the people that you're scared, the people's opinions who you're scared about, are not going to fucking remember you anyways. When you're in your deathbed and you're 90 and you're about to die, the people you're going to care about and want with you are your family, your close friends, your spouse, those people are not going to matter. So why are you giving their opinion more value and control over your life than your own? You're, you're giving them power over your life. And it makes no fucking sense. Our potential is a precious thing. And it's a tragedy to let it go to waste out of fear of what others will think. Just to look back years from now and then realize they weren't even thinking about you in the first place. So I'm going to leave you with one final quote to meditate upon. How long are you going to wait till you start demanding the best of yourself?